on, you know, get recording, a- is, recording on. is on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, okay. The recording. Yeah, yeah. I tried to record last time, by the way, and I don't know if you got a good recording last time, but it, no. mine was no good. Like I had the same problems. I think that Marchin has been having, it's clearly a software issue. The audio recording on, uh, well, I was using Voco screen, but I don't think it matters. I think it's an Ubuntu Linux issue and I, I should try, um, the other one, not pulse, but there's two different options, I think, but <clears throat> it, it sounds similar to the same. Oh, it's pulse and also. So it sounds similar to the same audio noise. Like it worked at first in the recording, like at the very beginning of the recording. And then mm-hmm. it turned into that noisy audio stuff. You couldn't discern things, which sounded kind of like what Martin was recording before in his recordings. At first it was good. And then it, I had a really, kinda, Oh, I think I can only record 15 minutes at a time on it, though. I like there's some good screen recording apps out there. OBS is one of the most popular. I think they use that for high res gaming, all that stuff. But it is open broadcast software, so it is open source. It works on all of the platforms, mm-hmm. Windows, Linux, I think. Mm-hmm. It, it, and it last I saw, it wasn't that hard for me to use on Windows, I think, a long time ago, and it shouldn't be that hard on Linux. But we, maybe. I haven't tried it in a while. Can we live stream this on YouTube? Live stream it? They, they used to do, or Marchin used to do that. There used to be a Google YouTube uh, live. It would push It would push to YouTube live. I think he was doing that as an upload live stream to YouTube. And I think they, YouTube kind of stopped that. Or I think it was problematic because of, of bandwidth and things like that. Right. It was better to record. If I can use YouTube to record the Jitsi meeting, though, and then we would get the um, then we would get the um, the thing on the side. We get our chat box in there. Interesting, oh. something to think about. Okay, I'll see what I can figure out. I think the only reason that that hasn't been on, yeah, sometimes stuff isn't as visible on Marchins, and I assume it's because of his screen resolution size or something like that. Like it shows things small, but I think he tries to you know show it on the video usually. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it depends on, it may be because he's using a laptop usually and your screen resolution uh, makes things show up different. <clears throat> uh-huh. I think that was the only issue there, but yeah, I think on mine, I got I got all the chat box and I'm usually using dual screen, so it's kind of complicated or different, but um, yeah. Uh, so I had- Yeah, and I usually- Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm just gonna say. So the, the next hackathon is March 16th, and we're invited ongoing. So for the next hackathon, I really need to have some small projects that people can work on on the day. And what I'm thinking about doing is, um, is um, well, thinking about. I'm planning to have several copies of the of the OS USB download the Linux downloaded onto USB, so people can have the dev environment, so it'll be ready for them to just go right to work on you know, maybe a free cat or maybe working on the dev test or something. Okay. So let's see, I'm going to look, I haven't, I just came in here, so I haven't even found uh, a document or a link to a meeting document here. Um, I'm going to pull that up. Is there, I, last week, I, I the, the, it sounded like people kind of wrote more stuff about the hackathon because I, I should have, actually, I meant to see if there was a video recording you posted last week to re-listen to what uh, yeah. specifics you'd said more for about the hackathon. Because I, I came back and I wrote, I think, some things yeah, in the um, document. Yes. Just stuff. But I kind of wonder whether it's, you know, how much broad stuff, or I was wondering how much of a detailed presentation it's better, if that was better to give on a specific thing, that way to get, you know, people targeted more. Um, well, it's so it we did it like a, a, this time we did a 30 second elevator pitch and then people came to the tables and asked to different areas and asked about things. So people are, you know, looking for specific projects to work on and it's a variety of skills that are coming in, you know, so I, it's hard for me to know what somebody's going to be good at. Um, you know, what, like what programming language they're going to be wanting to work in or whatever. So mm-hmm. if we had like a few different things, you know, something that was like more, you know, like, I don't know, maybe some freak. There don't seem to be a lot of people that are doing the the CAD at all. I haven't run into anybody who says, yeah, I do CAD. They're like, oh, I'm a full stock or I'm front end or something like that. 
Yeah, well, that that's for code. So, but I mean, if they're doing Python, they they mm -hmm. may be interested in coding for uh, FreeCAD, which I I still haven't got into much. I, I kind of went back to the C plus plus on the, or just C mostly on the Arduino thing. But mm -hmm. actually, I find a lot of that pretty annoying, even though I'm not doing much stuff. Like to say, C is just it is pretty dated in some ways. Uh, mm -hmm. C is the best. C plus plus is a bit more difficult, and I know I think March was wanting to move for some things I think he was posting about the um, the CB press and wanted to do that and getting that done with it that was for a real simple project and last time I did it work on that a little bit we looked over that I think it got way simplified there were still more features that could be added but it, it could I think it's simple enough it could be done with like the visual blocks uh, programming stuff he's talking about so Mm -hmm. but, uh, young people might be really good at coding that kind of stuff too. So, but other stuff we do to some degree, there's probably a need for like APIs almost mm -hmm. like if we're using Arduino, but in some ways to get almost get away from C for the ease of program with Python, since I've kind of experienced both, I guess now, mm -hmm. um, Python and that kind of stuff is, is so much easier that I can see why people want to go to the higher powered boards. Uh, to use the micro Python or circuit Python, which I think is, uh, first of all, it's kind of Adafruit specific still, but um, so the, they cost a little bit more, but they're much more powerful. Plus, if you want to do Internet of Things and more software, that's easier. You're spending a lot more power, you know, on the device to uh, do Python, interpret that instead of just doing something simple like C. Uh, but it can be hard to, to work with. C and learn C or C++, but there's a need for like APIs, I think, to connect the libraries. Like the libraries for Adafruit are simple and pretty good, learn that stuff, but it's, I'm not that familiar with designing like the broader APIs to interconnect a lot of these libraries and devices. So that that's something some better programmers to probably for? get better at. What would it be used for? Oh, what do you want to use the C programming language for? Oh, I've been doing, um, I, it's used on the Arduino for a bunch of the things. Most of them are pretty simple. The, it's used, you know, most of the time you don't need a lot of control uh, software or code on the Arduino to control um, things like the, there's a refrigerator thing, which is a temperature thing. There's, um, that the CB press uses that as well. Okay, control. embedded stuff. We're doing and this, what I've been doing is um, uh, like a greenhouse monitor temperature and monitor. It could be used for a lot of things. I mean, people, there's a lot of those in existence, I think, but they're not always super open source, uh, or at least they're not documented very well, usually. So um, slowly figured out how to do that, but I want to trying to figure out how to design it so it's very modular and there's libraries that can be reused and that kind of thing, but I'm not uh, too familiar with that level of development, but because um, <clears throat> a lot of it ends up being kind of specific to the sensors or you know, different screens and things like that, but obviously there's a lot of libraries and code out there at this point for Arduino. It's just, you know, how easy it, is it to put things together? Um, but sometimes there's there's different bugs, and I did kind of run into some bugs using multiple devices together, which I, I have finally fixed. But um, yeah, it sounds like there's more interest to put more Internet of Things in some of the, the devices. I noticed, um, you know, so you can talk about putting Internet of Things software wireless into like the refrigerator conversion kit, which uh, in some ways is unnecessary, but I can understand wanting to have more of that in a lot of devices uh, for certain reasons. There are efficiencies that can come from that. And maybe with the faster boards for certain things, Python, Python, I don't know about running more complex algorithms, like not necessarily AI, but, you know, more complex algorithms that might be AI, like, like you know, simple learning algorithms or something that could enhance energy use and, and you know, kind of control things for efficiency. But, um, I don't know, so th there's lots of software stuff to do. And of course, there's always probably a need for more development on FreeCAD software and 
of course, people could just join the you know, free code project, but there's probably, there's a lot of open source ecology specific things, I think, right, that could use teamwork on. <clears throat> yeah, we need, we need OSC stuff for, the, are, are we talking about the hackathon? We need OSC stuff and free CAD's just too huge. But I, I saw, I yeah. see the list, I see the list on free CAD. I just, um, I just um, updated be, my whole thing. It could be broken down. I mean, I was trying to, figure out, understand FreeCAD a little better to do like more macros and things. And there's people that have macros, but I've tested a lot of the macros that were available. Like on, there's a whole GitHub account with macros and a lot of this stuff is dated or doesn't seem to work for some reason because it's outdated. And they may, it may be, you know, that that could stuff would still be useful. It needs to be rewritten for the new versions or just updated because it's a few versions behind, uh, even from 0.16 or something like we're using. <clears throat> there was stuff for like 0.14 and 1.5, I think, uh, free that way. So, yeah, I'm trying to figure the macro would be helpful. You're talking about OSE projects that need updated? Um, yeah, so so for FreeCAD, there's lots of different ways to go at it. It's not just the FreeCAD development, application development. There's the workbenches and there's macros. You could just write macros that help speed up things or do certain things. Uh, in FreeCAD for specific tasks, the way we're trying to do it, you know, for open source ecology's standard FreeCAD usage uh, and, and, and in general. I mean, there's a lot of people writing macros, but they, a lot of them seem kind of out of date um, from what I looked at. And, and that stuff is just on GitHub. There's like, you know, repositories filled with old macros and things like that. And uh, I guess we could make a list of that kind of stuff and, you know, see what see what's most relevant and people could pick to, you know, update the Python on that. Um, sometimes it's not doing new stuff, it's reworking old stuff, which is more efficient. That sounds really good, Abe, actually. That sounds really super good because everybody's into Python and everybody knows about the problem, you know, that you have to update your Python, right? I mean, this is, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. yeah, if we could find, yeah. if we could find and, some things like that, that would be great. Awesome. There might be a need for, I don't know, other languages too. I don't know how much other languages besides Python are taken off. I mean, sometimes you can, uh, you know, make libraries and APIs and things for new languages to be used with, uh, you know, FreeCAD or, or other things like that. I know, I don't know, I haven't kept up with that Julia language, but it, for some things it sounds like it could be, it's, it's just like Python, but it sounds like it's closer to the efficiency of C. It's different, but I wondered whether something like that may eventually be used to replace certain parts of, uh, you know, uh, the code base for certain applications because it's faster. And Python, it can be slow. Some of the things in FreeCAD that are slow are, I think, because of Python. Uh, you know, it's easy to code, but not always, not always the fastest. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, yeah, I've forgotten about Julia. Yeah, it, it sounds like it had, um, it's for like scientific high performance computing to some degree. It's, let's see, it's, uh, it was just in time compiled. And I guess Python can be just in time as well in certain ways, but or there's versions of that to do that. But it, it had stuff for databases and scientific uh, math, you know, lots of high performance computing related things. But yeah, I don't know how that would be efficient for certain things in, in FreeCAD or not. Um, I mean, FreeCAD, I know certain levels it uses quaternions and, you know, some physics like math there, but I don't I don't know the exact details of that. Anyway, there's I lots think of we, stuff. We can do a lot of stuff only with Python in CAD. But oh, only the, the speed is not an issue. For our purposes, of course, maybe there are some plugins where this could, could be a problem. Yeah, I think some things, most of the things where I run in to speed issues in FreeCAD is where it's probably bugs that make it difficult to work with because of the way it's updating um, certain functions. I think like with like linear things or where you're doing large arrays of, of changes in FreeCAD that sometimes is slow or it was a little bit oh, buggy yeah. because of the way they designed it. But yeah, it, it depends on what things you're doing. And I don't know how okay. hard it is to write 
I, I see it. I, I never use uh, project with a lot of uh, details. Uh, usually, I only uh, play with uh, my plugins, maybe uh, very simple, uh, simple objects like uh, some frames. But probably you, uh, you have a point there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how the underlying code works for some of that. It was mostly the like doing multi arrays of of uh, repetitive, you know, items where you repeat the linear arrays or the polaric or something like that. But you know, but, uh, uh, do, not... do you want to? Excuse me. Uh, sorry. Do you, do you want to use uh, these uh, these features in FreeCAD, or why or why uh, um, are you interested in this particular um, computation? Um, I mostly for for the the hackathon and what's good to develop. I mean, ah, okay. FreeCAD. I think the main issue with FreeCAD is things like the assembly, like the way we're having to do assembly or sub assemblies and things. And I've seen assemblies done really well and efficient, but as far as the assembly to workbench is kind of the thing that I think most people are using right now. And some people seem to be able to use that better than I've been able to use it. It, it usually seems so buggy that uh, I have our time doing uh, assembly parts in an efficient way. Cause you can, put layers of a sub assembly is a smaller assembly and a bigger assembly and you can mux those assemblies and mix them together. And then you're supposed to be able to update uh, the larger assemblies of sub assemblies or a part in those sub assemblies and it should update through the chain. And I noticed, I think if you can use the assembly workbench correctly, it, I think the files of assemblies are smaller because of the way it does that. But as far as I can tell, it, it often just is too buggy, I think, which is well known, but people still figure out ways to use it. But uh, you know, I don't know the state of Assembly 3 and if it's going to be ready for you know, FreeCAD 0.18 or what version we're looking at for that kind of stuff. But there, there's a lot of software that could be developed for OSE for, for different projects, obviously, besides just FreeCAD and the printer, I, I don't know what kind of code just needs to be updated in things. I mean, there's we probably need teams of people just to update, you know, bugs and version issues and uh, things for, for different versions of the printer and so on. Is it got a, a, an issue in uh, in our project? Or the, I suppose the largest problem is documentation, not the code. Docu documentation, yeah, yeah. <laughs> documentation is still a huge issue with, um, yeah, everything on, uh, yeah, keeping the wiki, yeah. By the way, I post uh, a link about uh, some temperature controller in uh, in German. Which it's uh, it's in German. But may maybe the thing which you try to build. Uh, is it the same or very similar? Possibly. There's, I've seen for years I've researched that, like the greenhouse temperature and controller monitors, a lot of people using those, and some are kind of open or they share little bits of code, they tweak this or that. But um, yeah, I'm using fairly cheap sensors. And I think for larger greenhouses and things, you need more expensive different sensors and so on. But I was trying to get a general idea of of uh, variation and temperature in a greenhouse. And then you could control, you know, fans and pumps and if you have that kind of stuff. Uh, I suppose the question is what kind of, um, I guess, development projects are the hackathon people kind of geared toward? People probably want larger projects. I'm, I'm not sure because you probably want to work on team stuff, or sometimes people want to work on individual projects too. You, you um, never, you don't know how big the team's going to be. Like I have no way of knowing how big the team's going to be, but we had a lot of interest. And the nice thing about our project is that it's not political and there aren't like the kind of like, I don't know, like some of the stuff is kind of like 
is pr presumes that you have a pr particular political orientation, right? And we don't. And so we have a real advantage that way. Um, so maybe some smaller pro uh, maybe like a variety of projects of different sizes and de depending on how many people show up and what they want to do, pick one and work on it. They also had, um, at the hackathon on Saturday, they had a couple of vendors that were coming around that were, you know, would be able to help. Can you mute that? Please? Um, that would help come around and uh, facilitate meetings, you know, to help keep the developers on track. So it, they're really trying to um, be super supportive of projects. You know, so if we if, if we show up with a couple different sizes and a couple different languages, then we can, you know, pick one based on the people that are um, wanting to participate. Yeah, and a lot of projects end up being multilingual sometimes too. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I wonder if there's there's possibly it's been a while since I looked at wiki stuff, but there's possibly things for the wiki that could be developed too. Um, and some of those are related, maybe existing projects that they would take off that are not developed. Sometime back, I noticed Wikimedia has a, um, a, a WYSIWYG, you know, GUI interface project uh, that's very much alpha or beta so that it's easier to edit the wiki in, you know, what you see is what you get. You just literally edit, you know, GUI style, wiki, which could help actually improve, make it easier for anybody to do documentation. So there's, and there could be projects related to that or plugins um, for the wiki. And, you know, a lot of those probably have general, you know, it's, it's, oops, it's Wikimedia. Uh, so, you know, that, that could have a lot of overlap and interest, uh, for, for a lot of people, because lots of people use Wikimedia. That's a good idea. I was also wondering if Michael needs any help with the system administration, or is that something that's better to just have one person do? I'm not sure about that. I think he's had it covered. I don't think he does a lot on that. It's kind of an occasional thing, and he updated a while back, but I, you'd have to, I guess, post somewhere there and ask him or email him. Um, I don't, know that, I don't know what kind of administration. I think it's been basically to keep keep it kind of minimal. Changes occasionally they've changed servers and updated software, but it's not. I don't think it's a common thing. I think he's kind of let it let it go for a while, and they're just occasionally done updates. Yeah, it does seem to work for the most part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The latest updates. Uh, this or last year seemed seemed pretty good. Uh, yeah, didn't he migrate the whole thing? Yes, um, and put in the file size limits, which I guess was an issue. And I guess that that's part of his issue is cost. Uh, mainly, it sounded like backups were the issue because of the maybe differencing backups, and and we were constantly uploading medium sized large files a lot, and that was creating cost issues with backups, I think. Um. Cool, cool. Well, I think that, um, yeah, I'm going to try to see if I can't put together more of the chain on the 3D printer too with the um, water bottle shredder and the filament maker. And then I talked to somebody at the, hack it's in my debrief, I talked to somebody with the city of Seattle who um, keeps track of all the data and kind of had it just like the kernel of an idea about how somehow we could use like the recycling collection because there's no bottle bill here in, in Washington, like maybe like the water bottle could somehow combine water bottle collection with filament producing and micro factories to somehow um, help the differently homed. It, it, you know, we're just kind of like getting ways for underserved people to, you know, become self-sufficient in some way. Recycling, yeah. That it sounded like that was pretty popular. I think uh, Dave Hackens, who I think he's the one that designed that shredder that we're kind of copying off of. Um, and it's not like over there, and I guess it's in Holland, it's Dutch, I think. So they they have you know these pods where they shred, you know, plastic can be recycled, and then they resell little items made from it. I don't know how exactly they're doing that over there, uh, but yeah, it's something 
different programs like that can be done. On actually, um, can I put in a few cents? Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, this is my mostly mostly print CNC I'm working on, but I've just recently purchased a shredder that I'm still waiting on um, from the precious plastic community, and I'm about to pay for uh, an injector and an extruder. But I'm actually interested in like a I'm working on my own startup called House Party, and I like to make small toy scale models of Woogie House, Open Building Institute, CD Home. I think I saw something recently about Vivi House. But I think that'd be kind of a cool project to document, to like take like junk plastic, repurpose it with like a shredder and machinery, and actually like a CNC or like laser cut some parts to like a house module and like allow people to like showcase that with the software technology and like local junk that you can utilize and the machinery from the open source community. I think that'd be really cool. But I'm not sure if it's totally on par with what you guys are doing, but um, I just saw your guys' link and I thought I'd like stop in on your video chat conversation. Am I off par with you guys? We're happy to have you. So where are you at? Well, right now, like, as I kind of searched for, this is my mostly printed CNC. It's uh -huh. mostly, mostly assembled, but I have right. a bit more work to do. And well, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use um, some Raspberry Pis I have, and I ordered some more. I'm trying to sync up with my favorite open source technologies, of course, with software, but also with, like, uh, hardware, like WikiHouse, Precious Plastic. And I'm trying to get into the habit of vlogging. But I haven't gotten my spy hat to totally work. I'm still getting to work on the documentation. But I think it'd be kind of cool to showcase people like uh like my end goal with my project is to make like a self-replicating home. So I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with like all the open source technology out there. But there's a robot called Nero um, from France, France, I believe. And then I mentioned like the Tabby vehicle, the open source like car, um, and of course the life track. But it seems like kids are more interested in like the Tabby vehicle and the life track component. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to take like the precious plastic machinery, show them to recycle it, but then also use like my CNC eventually to manufacture like the Wiki house or CD home, and as well as like a toy RC sized car or a toy size like tractor, if that makes sense. But I'd like to, I have this weird vision of like using like the robotic system with Panera with Ross to like do like self assembly. So it's like a self replicating house party system. That makes sense. Yeah. Have you seen the um, Fab Lab work with the um, with the forty printing? No. So um, forty probably get us. Are you are you on open source ecology? Are you on our project? I'm. I actually was a past like builder for a period of time. Uh huh. But I was I got got pulled off because I had some financial stuff I had to focus on first. But I'm trying to like reengage. Definitely. But, do, you, do you so? Do you have a do you have a log page on our wiki? It got it got migrated should, yeah. recently. Okay. Well, we technology. Yeah, we'd love to have you log. Yeah, like um, yeah, because I remember Martian was interested, but I know like with open source projects, uh, people have different priorities and stuff happens in life. So like right now, I'm trying to get in the habit of like documenting more of what I do, but then like occasionally do like highlights or commits to maybe your guys' repository, wiki house. Or just the projects that I'm interested in. Yeah, when you said scale models, I think I was I was thinking maybe talk to Marchin. It looked like somebody I think Marchin posted on the wiki recently about making scale models of a lot of the machines and stuff because he's been talking about that for That'd a while. That'd be really cool. So it's it's toy based models, scales and things to to kind of I guess view the 3D and to kind of demonstrate. I don't know what scale would be ideal. You know, it depends on the machine probably. So that would have to be something to figure out, but. Sometimes that can help you to, to look at 3D things, and if you can do it in modular parts, maybe you can experiment with the way parts go together and so on. Uh, it sounded like you said your CNC, that's more like cutting and laser, uh, not not 3D printing. Eventually 3D printing, but like right now, like um, I'm kind of doing it in stages right now. Um, but yeah, like, uh, my goal is to use the Wikihouse base model to like fix and flip houses, if that makes sense. So I make like my idea like home estate on a toy based scale and I could like sell the toys as well. But like what I want to do with like the wiki house or CD home is if I can make like toy based versions to make money is like I could purchase their wholesale, like a, like under market value homes 
flip them and then put money back into like the venture of the nonprofit, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yes. Different related to building construction. Yes. But I think it'd be kind of cool to like showcase like um like in Holland here we like I'm from Holland, Michigan, not Holland, overseas of sorts. But like there's like the local farmers market. I think it'd be really cool like showcase like this plastic and recycling machinery, like the CD comb, the wiki house, the open source technology and a toy based model, and also to a certain extent like um small manufacturing based model, and just showcase like the whole process to a completed project. I think that would be like a good like entertainment ex exposure. I know like Martian's been doing workshops, um, but I think he has like his focus with um, his projects, but then there's also like the Nero robot, the Ross operating system, um, and other technologies that I feel like could really sync well with um, all of Martian Jakubowski's work. But I think it'd be really cool to show kind of like an orchestra of sorts of these machines working together to construct like a home estate of sorts on a small scale version or a toy car or a tractor. So it's like a little mini, like General Motors or Tesla, like manufacturing facility, like what Marshall was doing with like his workshop uh, project of sorts, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think the workshops kind of changed. There were more 3D printers, but he's looking, I think he said, he emailed earlier that he's wanting to get a workshop for the bigger equipment, again, the summer, the tractor, bigger tractor and so on. And the, the micro factor, I think it's still applicable. I mean, uh, I think, I don't know how much they're trying to sell 3D printer kits. Um, I think that's, that's 700 or 800 dollars is what I think he was doing. Actually, yeah. yeah, that's one of the ones I want to purchase. Actually, our build's um, under 600 now on the 3D printer. Sorry to interrupt. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think some some costs were. Um, uh, th there's the cost, and then there's what they're just trying to sell the kits with a markup for, I guess. But uh, I think the actual just materials cost is was pretty low you know there's a bunch of work of course <laughs> the uh, kit builders were putting into that um, I'm not sure how many of those kits they're making still uh, um, so I'm I'm sorry if I'm interrupting your whole conversation but what's the focus of like this conversation because like I have like my own like project I'm working on that I'm like to maybe showcase to you guys actually but I don't want to like take up your time if you're focused on a certain like agenda with this meeting not really I guess I came in late and uh, I think I so I missed part of the first part of it but uh, we haven't been that organized this has been kind of a discussion lately, yeah, so the agenda is to listen to interesting developers doing interesting things so you're right on point what's your name okay I'm Chaz Okay, Chaz, awesome. Stick your email in the text box and keep in touch, okay? Yeah, yeah but but I'm wondering if I can maybe forward you guys like my business plan, just like what I'm working on and see what might be able to sync up with you guys. Cause I'm definitely interested in like some of the, many of the projects Martian has been working on as well as like um, if it's Dave Hackins and um, I'm trying to remember the WikiHouse, uh, Alistair Parvin or something from WikiHouse. Um, but I'm really interested in like um, maybe syncing my efforts with you guys on certain like ventures of sorts. Yeah, I'm not up on WikiHouse, so I'm interested to hear about that. Last I knew, it was kind of like CNC cutting plywood to piece together, you know, houses that were kind of cheap, small, tiny homes or different things like that. I, I think I'm just trying to push more again the the compressed earth block uh, building because the, the house that they built the last time wasn't really using much of that. And I think he's looking to move more to the compressed earth because that's so much more energy efficient, but you can still build some things out of the, the plywood and you know, you've got to have a roof and things like that, but you could still wrap a house with earth block to make it energy efficient. Even if I guess a lot of it was built out of plywood. Okay. Yeah, but I definitely want to experiment with like um, both CNC and like 3D print models of the CD Cajon and Wookie House and VV House or whatever else is out there. Um, but like, um, but yeah, I'd like to vlog and like um, also maybe make it more of like an entertaining workshop. Um, yeah, but like anyway, I can forward you guys like some of my documentation of what I'm like trying to do and what I've been working on if you guys are interested. 
Yeah. So if you're, is your business model open source, that kind of thing? So if yes. you can just post what you can post on the wiki, uh, that's probably a good place if it's fully open source. Um, it, it's sometimes yeah. I know, hard to do some business models open source. Uh, I think the most impressive one I've seen is, is Lulzbot. I saw, I think Martian was posting a lot of stuff on the wiki. And you haven't posted anything on the wiki yet, huh? because I, I thought I saw somebody post else posting on the wiki kind of about what, what you're talking about, like 3D printing, uh, you know, models of the, of the, or maybe they're talking about 3D printing the whole building. I, I'm not sure there's stuff like that too, but uh, where they 3D print mud, you know, buildings and so on. But uh, I thought I saw something about that recently. Somebody else was asking about OBI and uh, the, the CD go home. And I, I think I saw in the wiki too, there, uh, Katarina, I guess, is the one with the OBI, and they're supposed to have a book for the Kickstarter. And the, yes, I saw that, that too. Done, I'm looking forward to okay. that. Yeah, I guess that that's getting uh, hopefully finished sometime soon this year. I guess. Yeah, um, for like my projects, I am wanting to keep things like open source. Um, I'm kind of viewing it as a, like um, like the toy based models, like anything that I do, it's. Um, I haven't done much like R and D, and I don't think I'm good at that. But once again, I want to do the toy based models and document my experience, like working with these projects that are like already mostly built. Um, but I'm kind of interested, in, like for like the entertainment aspect of it, like with the workshops. Um, like I know Martian's done a good job with like documentary. Um, but once again, like the two models I have, I'm wanting to base my business off of is selling the toy based kits, um, like the track, like the life track, like a toy based model or the wiki house or um but just like while i'm doing the precious plastic recycling of sorts but my big venture that i want to eventually do is to purchase like foreclosed homes or under market value homes like small stuff that i can handle and fix and flip them and then sell them and then reinvest into my venture which i want to keep open source for the most part because my, my i guess my vision is to have like is to kind of grow like my machinery but then anyone else can go ahead and like build off of my work or just see my like vlog entries with say like building up the C mostly put in CNC or building up the wiki house or um, the precious plastic machinery, maybe even like the cement earth brick press, and the life track. Like I can envision like the life track as like a forklift and the tab vehicle as eventually like a full size car. Like I can't afford to buy one now currently, but it'd be kind of cool if over time, like, I built up my equipment to a point where I could like do that kind of stuff. Um, that's kind of my vision of sorts with that is to build like this toy set on the side and have it be publicly open source. Just my, my documentation of like how I'm working with the equipment and my experience working with the machinery. And then I make like maybe more money as far as like say fixing or flipping homes that are already kind of like just sitting there kind of aimlessly. Just, they just need some like elbow grease and fix it up aspect to like uh to sell that i can read to like the venture of sorts does that make sense or am i totally disconnected from you guys okay yeah you make yeah. sense we're texting yeah i like the idea of the uh the toys actually because that uh, I mean, you know, they're so throwaway and there's so much plastic with that because they're, they're, they're short-lived. I mean, kids play with the toy truck for a while and then it's junk. <laughs> so yeah. recycling, it's a great idea. Plus, I think you could probably, with certain 3D printing these days, they make all kinds of complex gears and, um, you know, complicated, fully functional equipment to some degree, depending on the type of 3D printing. So you could make, you know, really colorful nice toys that have some functionality and gearing and kind of demonstrate, uh, you know, certain engineering and, you know, concepts. So they're a little bit educational. Exactly. Uh, they might have a certain age limitation if, but yeah, you can, you can print, uh, I guess you can print some clear plastics where kids could see functionality inside of it or plus they have that. I'm thinking of that water soluble, uh, the dual printer. I can't remember what the name of it is now. Now, P PVA, I think, the water soluble stuff, where they print gear boxes that are fully functional, and then you put it in water to dissolve the parts in between the gears, you know, and then it's it's it operates, you know, fully Interesting. functional. So you could make um, toys with all kinds of gears and things that could be visible or functional, 
Uh, I guess you'd have to worry about some safety issues for real small kids, but you know, depends on the size and scale of things. But yeah, I mean, I could see it being, you know, like engineering centered, uh, kind of demonstrate lots of different toys. My, my vision was for it to be like a family build experience or say like you bring like the family or kids, whatever. And then you can see the whole process of like building like, you know, like the home, the car, a cool tractor, and just like basically doll size models of what would be cool to have like full scale size models. Um, but that also kind of aids me as far as what I want to do with like fix, fix and flipping houses. Because I feel like that's where I would like make good money of sorts and like put people in like affordable homes because housing can get pretty expensive. I feel like, but if I can purchase like say under market value homes, then um, I can like could be the middleman or compete in areas where competition is needed. I feel like, um, but it would bring like the, I want to like bring the price of like housing down while still like um, being something I can manage and making like a profit of it of sorts if that makes sense. Yeah, I can see the, the toys and scale models being a pretty good advertising for the other actual business and, you know, kind of ends up being showcasing open source tools at a small scale and then, yeah, kind of advertising the larger scale. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I'm going to make a toy for, um, as my first 3, 3D printer project. Uh, but it would be rather a, uh, not a model, but a real toy of, of uh, it would be a toy robot, I suppose. Uh, they came from uh, one uh, German group. They have, uh, they made uh, 3D animation uh, in, uh, in support of uh, open source hardware, I just, uh, try to find out uh, the link and i want to uh, to print some uh, characters from this video animation also for advertisement but for fun and to test uh, 3d print uh, printing technology of course it's uh, not uh, on uh on the same level like you uh, suggested with homes or um machines they are all the things that are more um, have also a, another purpose as a model for engineering and toys are, are toys. Cool. So as far as like the robot, are you thinking of doing like more of like a vehicle robot or like more of like a like a arm manufacturing type thing or? Uh, um, neither vehicle nor the arm, but uh, something like. Uh, oh wait, I, I better will find the link. It it is a character from from a movie, robot, but it okay. uh, repre represents um, open. Uh, uh, it is some kind of advertisement of or concept of open source hardware. That is why I wanted to print this particular robot. Okay. Trying to find, I guess I just have to go to my Google Drive. Let's go to Google Drive. Team drives. Motors team 2018. And I, I posted the link for for the little animation. Okay. The robot Harold. The point is everybody likes the toys. Yeah. 
no matter if in my case more for children and in your case for, for also for engineers and as a proof of concept and also for children why not yeah I'm just trying to find the file I have in Google Drive. My internet's kind of slow, it looks like. Um, But yeah, you guys can go ahead and continue the conversation. Uh, my internet is a bit slow loading up the files. So what do you think, Abe, are we, uh, it's good having you, Chaz. I think that's why everything's open source and we post the meeting links, you know, so people show up and talk about stuff. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, I do have, um, let me download this. It's not the full, um, detailed plan, but it's like an earlier draft I made. Um, trying to think which would be better, Microsoft Word or Open Document format, probably Open Document. Open Document. It, it's not in a Google document in your Google Drive? Um, it is a Google document in my Google Drive. Um, maybe I could just oh. share it to, yeah, you, you probably recall that that's how we usually share everything is still in Google Docs, just okay. published to the wiki. <laughs> right, I didn't realize that. Um, so I have share. Uh, do I add like a certain name or email address or a page? Um, we usually publish it, copy the link to the wiki and, and do the, uh, let's see, how do you do it? You do publish, which I think is under, what is it you publish if it's, it can just be linked to the link to, well, usually you have to put it in a folder. Uh, it's usually what it is. If it's an open source, you know, we usually put it in some kind of openly shared folder that's fully public and then uh, share it that way. But, you know, any, um, either way, if it's link shared, I guess that's, that's okay too. I already uh, However you need to share it. Yeah, I already emailed you, so if, if you can't get it posted, somehow you can email it to me and we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, which email, like CS Morrill or? Oh, mine, mine says Jennifer Lee Silvis. I don't know whichever one you posted over there on the left. Wasn't that you? All right, now i got to get back to you guys' page. Um, oh, yeah, CS Morrill at mt.edu. So let me check or put up that quick. That should be from Jennifer Lee Silvis, I think.
or a meta something, but it should be the Jennifer Lee Silvas. I think I have too many tabs open. That's my problem. <laughs> no such thing. <laughs> All right. True. Okay, so reply. Okay, I got your email. I gotta download my stuff from Google Drive. So I know I have it. I can get on my phone. So why can't I find it on Google Drive? Okay, so share add names. Gmail.com and then um, okay, it's two emails. Interesting. I'm really enjoying these last couple of super chill meetings. <laughs> File, download, open document. Yeah, um, let's see. Do we have a page in the wiki for the hackathon or software related stuff yet? Uh, I think we just need to list lots of software projects. For yeah, we, we do not have a wiki hackathon page yet. Maybe not a wiki page, maybe, well, maybe a page, but a link to a, a presentation document or, I don't know, something to list all the possible software or links to the wiki pages with all the different software that could be done, something like that, right? Yeah, Got yeah. To aggregate. I mean, there's just so much stuff. Right. For software wise, I'm not sure what kind of software updates, you know, programming might need to be done for getting the micro factory more complete. I mean, it, it kind of exists already with, with uh, the precious plastic shredders, kind of what's being used for that part of it. Uh, the filament maker is kind of done, but most of that stuff I think is just scaling, and I'm not sure it necessarily has to be redesigned. Um, uh, there are things that could be replaced, I think, with Arduinos. Uh, the PID controller that's a commercial off-the-shelf device could be replaced with an Arduino running, I think, PID algorithms, and there's some that already exist, but they might need, you know, tweaking for particular uses in, in different uh, machines that way, because there's a lot, of, a lot of temperature control stuff needs PID. The filament maker and uh, I guess that'd be the main one there's other things yeah I was I think thinking that that if you could break the temperature control down into like chunks and um, scaling might be a good like small small project for someone to work on you know like a couple people could could work on scaling something that that sounds like something that might not take as advanced skills it's like actually finding bugs I don't know yeah I'm not sure the state I think the the only software thing I can think of that I'm aware of might be if you, I know Marchin did some redesign on the Lyman filament extruder to make kind of an OCS. I saw a cat on that. That was quite a while back uh, where he was making the whole thing sort of more wall mountable, which I think Lyman had a version of too, but you know, they kind of all need to be connected together and maybe scaled up to do more significant rapid production, shred more plastic, make more filament um of course if you if you shred enough plastic you might need more than one filament maker too i, I don't know but uh depending on what scale or just multiple machines that who knows what the, the ideal scale is for some of those machines uh if you're gonna have to do a lot of plastic processing i think it's i think it's really exciting you know, and, and people complain about China not buying our water bottles anymore or taking our recycling or whatever. And I'm like, good, because <laughs> we can use that.
So I think we're pretty wrapped up. Yeah, I think um, I covered a bunch of things. I don't know what um, uh, was discussed earlier long. Did you get a recording shared? I guess I should look at your log um, from last week. And did that mm -hmm. succeed? Okay. It, it didn't record my drop. As it turned out, my Dropbox was too full. So I emptied my Dropbox. Oh. So this one should be recording and it should I should be able to okay. record. Yeah. And I, oh, but I found I found two meetings from October that hadn't been posted on YouTube. So oh. you know, going through perusing my Dropbox, I did find that I had actually recorded two two other meetings. So I got those shared, and um, they're on my. Oh, can you can post? Can you post onto our YouTube? I I don't have Marchin's YouTube. It's kind of he doesn't really have a um like a, a what do they call it a YouTube account that's. Uh, for open source ecology, it's just his YouTube, which th there's ways to do, uh, I can't remember what it's called, um, a branch YouTube, but you can you can make like a, a segmented YouTube where you have lots of account, a brand account. I think that's what it's called. Right. Yeah, okay, well, I've got them, I've got them posted on my YouTube and I don't, I'm pretty sure I posted them in my devlog. I'll, I'll make sure that the links to those two meetings are in my devlog, then whoever needs them can, uh, you know, put the meetings on to March and March and can put them onto his account so that they're in the, they're, but they're in the, they're on the meeting page for October. Okay. I see. And I moved, I moved all the old meetings off the main page so that they've got their own little chunks. Now everything's tidied up. Yeah, I had a lot of fun in my Dropbox the other day. I was like, what? What's this? What's this? No wonder my Dropbox is full. Yeah, I think we need better ways to record this stuff because I think some of those issues before with software, um, I'll have to test OBS. I should have been doing that while I was doing the meeting here because that, that's the only easy way to test it is just recording Jitsi. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know, find out if it's the Linux software underneath or maybe testing OBS. One thing I liked about VocoScreen, which I, I think I was telling Martin before, and I think he was still trying to use Handbrake from different problems, but I was recording at like eight frames a second and significantly reducing the upload because I'm on a slow upload too, and it, it you don't want to have to upload a large screen a video and there's just no reason the quality is plenty good at like full hd resolution but eight frames a second is fine because we don't you know even for, for if you were showing other video it'd still be fine so it would just make like 30 40 50 megabyte files instead of hundreds of megabytes you know um, so i don't know if i can do that with something like obs i'll have to install that maybe and see if that does better i don't think i have it on linux currently Yeah, I'm super lazy about making sure my stuff's not taking up too much space. I'm going to have to change my wicked ways. Are we thinking of anything else? Not particularly. I, I think the thing is, it sounds like that the hackathon could bring some people in, get interest, even if, even if it's just software and not, you know, people doing CAD, which <laughs> we really do need people to do CAD, but you never know. They might, uh, we might get some eventual interest on that front too, from people working on, for projects but um, yeah I was I was thinking if I had the stuff if I had the Linux already on USB so all they had to do was plug it in and and launch it and went right into went right into the free CAD you know you know 
that's the other thing. Generate some interest. I keep forgetting to look again for um, uh, some Linux, or I was trying to look and post for different Linux forums because I think we really do need an update to the OSC Linux, and that's kind of complicated. But I think Marchin has posted a number of software updates needed. I think to uh, on the open source Linux page, um, OSC Linux page. So eventually, there's there's a need to update that uh, with some new versions of software. Um, and that hasn't been done in a while. We haven't just retained any Linux gurus to do that. It shouldn't be that hard. I mean, I could take time and figure out how to do that from all the documentation. I, I played around with that a little bit before making and selling different Linux versions, but it'd be good to find some Linux people that were solid that would kind of maintain that more frequently. Uh, Linux I think, is I think pretty popular, so I should be able to do that. Yeah, I was just going to post well, originally I was looking for like a Linux distro forum and there was one, but I couldn't log in. It's like they were blocking new users or something, but there, there are lots of Linux forums. It could be Ubuntu forum somewhere, a general forum. And I keep forgetting to write up some kind of post. Just, you know, we need, you know, open source Linux, uh, you know, gurus to maintain distro. Uh, There's a Linux time. club that meets at least once a month in Seattle. I'll make sure I get to the Linux club. Mm. Yeah, that could be good too. The club. By the way, if you uh, create bootable CDs or different, this what do you want to use to boot OS E Linux? What's the question? So what do you want to use as a boot boot device for OS E Linux? We've been using USB. Uh, well, I, I just use Linux on my desktop installed. I installed OSE Linux from a while back and I've just been using that with some updates, but because there are a bunch of things that are hard to do at some point when you have to change software and try different things. Um, well, I, I, this is um, uh, the main reason why I'm asking the question because if you will uh, now use for Hackathon or other uh, event uh, bootable um, devices, uh, it, uh, is there any problem to store the data? Because you cannot store uh, data if you use CD or D4D. Oh yeah, we've had problems storing on the USB, haven't we? I never could figure it out. There's ways to do that depending on how you format and set up the stick. I, I tried a couple different methods, but the general idea was to just put everything in the cloud, of course, on the wiki or GitHub or whatever. But it can be a problem not doing the persistence. Um, but th there are ways to do persistence. So um, the, the UNET boot and I think tools let me create persistent USB devices. But som sometimes that was a little bit flaky or complicated depending on versions of software and that's that's a whole nother thing that has to be maintained and documented Which, i hope I it will not happen then the, during the hackathon people start to code and then they reboot the system and everything is gone yeah yeah usually it's pretty stable for simple stuff i don't really have crashes of Linux OC, but it could happen. Well, it sounds like I have a lot to think about before the next hackathon. Yeah, I think some documents to organize all the ideas would be good so um, that as many people as possible can contribute because I can you know, edit some ideas into that occasionally, like I did in the last meeting document. But as long as you get a little more thorough, I figure at some point more thorough presentations will get people more interested if we get more specific, you know. But it's, it's an opportunity too for people to kind of figure stuff out too as the self starters and learners might be interested in just figuring out what's ideal too. Well, I'm free to do many like, even though we only have like the 30 second elevator pitch to to introduce our project I'm free to do presentations like in my area so when people come and ask if I have a couple people asking about something 
I can do a little presentation about a particular project, you know, and generate interest that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. All day and there, it, there's like. Let's see. So know. was the main one you've gone with so far, was it the GPS last time? Because I think, mm -hmm. I think that was a pretty good project. I didn't do a, I didn't do a project because we couldn't, I couldn't get it isolated down and I had to work in the afternoon. So I, I spent the day just talking to people and answering questions about um, open source ecology and um, basically talking the project up and also worked a little bit on another project that I'm on that was also at the hackathon. But the next one, I'm not going to work. I'm going to make sure I have the day scheduled off ahead of time. Um, I didn't know we were in this hackathon until like the week before because I hadn't heard back from Mark at all since I'd emailed him like over a month before that. So um, it was kind of last minute over the holidays, but um, I'll be better prepared for the next one and I'll have the day off and have a team and do the scrums and get her all done. It'll be good. Maybe get some local people. The, one of the things that the people that are coming into the hackathons seem to be looking for, like a couple of people were looking for local projects. They wanted something that they could like physically appear at and do. But I don't think that we necessarily need to do that. I mean, I kind of think the whole thing with the coding is that you can do it from home. You can do it from wherever you're at. That's what I like about it. So. It'll be good. And it'd be, I think it'd be nice if we could get some interaction from some of the people that are actually developing on projects too. We'll have a little bit more ahead of time preparation. If we could, um, you know, maybe if somebody's working on, like, like somebody's working on one of your projects or something, if I've got people working on one of your projects, maybe we could, you know, Skype you in or something and they could talk to you about it. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind getting people to uh, work on whatever I might be familiar with. I'm not sure my code is that great, but it could be starting point. It's, I, I don't mind letting more people that experience with code to take over uh, a lot of the coding on stuff because I can go back to free CAD and stuff, which is kind of what I'm going to do. I kind of just needed the, the – it's interesting having the, the monitor climate device for, for the weather in the winter in the, my greenhouse here, but – I've got cold weather coming and I don't think it's going to be ready yet, but I've made progress. So, well, I think that, um, I think that if people have interpersonal contact with the developers that are already on the project, you know, cause you guys are all pretty personable, um, that it, that it creates more of a kind of like a sense of belonging, you know, yeah, like already belong to the project. Need more, um, yeah, the team teamwork and discussion on stuff. Um, I think that was something that um, let's see, uh, uh, I can't remember the, the name Sarah in in um, I can't remember his name. The, the people on the West Coast had said on the logs and things they thought there should be more inclusion in the general team because they were kind of separate teams. Which sometimes that's useful, but I think people wanted more focus. I mean, some people are kind of doing their own thing, but I, I don't mind. Uh, you know, focusing on different, whatever is most helpful overall uh, as far as projects go. So um, I kind of, you know, shifted to the 3D printer stuff because I thought that that was more immediately helpful. Although it's it's kind of the whole micro factory thing. I think the 3D printer, there's lots of open source 3D printers to some, or there's a few, there's enough people doing printers that that's kind of a known thing. So in some ways I think it's, it's to be, uh, you know, have more interesting stuff in that arena. Uh, the micro factor as a whole is probably the big uh, item that, that will attract people or make people interested because 3D printers have been kind of done. So they're not, they're not that interested. 3D printing is interesting to get it maybe cheaper if the quality is still good. And that's something I don't care for either. I, I don't want a 3D printer that's too low quality that just doesn't do stuff. I mean, it's going to get a, 3D printer, I'd still want the good quality so it could print everything pretty well because quality for making trinkets, you know, isn't so important, but there are things that you can print, I think, with detail, uh, living hinges, things like that, although I don't feel like living hinges, but there are certain things you can do 
with a better quality printer and maybe not others, but I, I don't know that much because I don't have any experience with 3D printers, but um, I, I think keeping them pretty good quality is important. And by the time you figure the cost of some of these printers being several hundred dollars, you know, the functionality, it, it should, you know, give you a pretty good return on investment at some point. So I don't think that the cost is necessarily the biggest issue. The, the complete package recycling is kind of, I think, a good focus, which may be less the printer and maybe even less the shredder, although maybe there's scalability for that. The filament maker, I think, probably needs the most work, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, to get it to get it perfect. I, I think it works, as I understand, Lyman's filament mixture works really well, but it might need to be scaled and so on. So, and, and, and then the whole package, hmm, the, the problem is there is you're buying all three of these machines, they're gonna be pretty expensive. So it's kind of like more thing you target to somebody that can figure out how to do a business to it. So then the issue becomes something I'm not sure that's been open sourced as well is, is people designing open source business plans, which as I understand, that's kind of a, a goal overall, you know, open source ecology, a major goal is uh, distributed business and enabling people to do you know, replicate business around that. So, and that's been kind of hard. Uh, generally, I guess, I mean, the workshops, people like to come work on big machines and stuff, but uh, so far the scaling of, you know, the small businesses to do recycling hasn't hasn't taken off in the US, from what I can tell, so. It, it seems like you could work that somehow so that it wouldn't have to be the same people doing all three you know, that kind of goes to sort of like the Gestalt microfactory where where one person isn't responsible for all of the equipment, right? You could have different people. You could have like two or three people. Maybe you're into the shredding and that could be a lot of fun to watch plastic water bottles shred. Maybe somebody else likes dealing with making filament, you know, because it's not going to be the same person who's going to even enjoy dealing yeah. with each of the three things. So I think, yeah, maybe all the you could break it down different ways, you know, multiple people doing on a large scale. But some of that question, I guess, is what is the, with the, on the business side, sometimes the question is, what is the scale that's going to work? How distributed does it need to be for certain regions and demographics, population density and so on? Uh -huh. That's business stuff. In some ways, we almost need more, more business minded people to do open source business planning, which I think, you know, Marching has been trying to do a lot of that and some things have worked and, some things uh, have been slower to develop, but it's, you know, it, sometimes it's a chicken and egg problem to get it started. But um, I know I was reading on the wiki too that Lulzbot is surprisingly impressive, I think, as a sharing and open source structured company. They're like they're extremely transparent in the whole business plan with the CEO and everything is very sharing and open about the whole, the whole business. It sounds like at least as much as you could, Imagine the bean, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, that seems like a good example, a company for open and transparent business plans. Um, what about what about? Um, so I'm kind of looking. I I would like to transcend the entire wage debt system, and you know the business plan thing seems to kind of go with the wage debt system. I'm trying to figure out ways to um, integrate the micro factory with kind of the, um, are you familiar with Michael Tellinger's Ubuntu project? No. It's uh, um, it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with software. It has to do with um, basically open sourcing um, society pretty much. <sighs> okay. I'll, I'll write something about it on my log page because I do think it's kind of relevant and it's also apolitical, but the premise is that is that money is a tool of enslavement, and that no matter how we, uh, no matter what we do with the money-based system, that we're still going to be um, having trouble tra um, transitioning out of scarcity. And he's got he's got the write-ups on how it could work. And there's also um, there are some there are some communities that are integrating like the Ubuntu like an Ubuntu government with the local governments that are there and kind of intermingling and hopefully, you know, at some point turning it into a, into a voluntary society. The idea, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with the idea that 
you can keep this whole thing running. We can keep this whole thing running if each person just does a few hours of work a day that this whole, um, you know, and that's not saying that's all you get to work, but just that it doesn't really take that much to keep things going in a smooth way and finding ways to coordinate people so that we can minimize our inputs and maximize our outputs and potentiate ourselves as people basically. So the word Ubuntu in that context is the, the I understand it's, I think it's some kind of African work that means community and that's yep. how they used it. It's, so yep. it's not Linux specifically, it's just community. Yeah, okay. he, yeah, he's South African, so it's not, I mean. Okay, yeah. I understand. Um, but he's he's got a lot of stuff written up on it. Where I was in Alaska, there were some people in Homer, Alaska, that were working on integrating, um, getting home, the Homer government to integrate some of the Ubuntu um, procedures and ways of relating. And I, I just don't remember the specifics. It wasn't ever, it's something that I like and I'm interested in, but it's not like my project. But um, I think it would work with, I think, I think that open source ecology, I think that, that our designs and our and our projects would be useful to people that are, you know, doing that transcending the whole governance system. I think I just there's just so many places that we can generate interest with this. But I've been trying to like there's like prepper communities and kind of like extreme woo communities that would also be very interested, but I've kind of like stayed away from that for now. I don't want to make March and Twitch with. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with some of those things. Although, in general, it sounds like you said not software, but it could be. Um, is is it related to blockchain or like um, what do they call it? The software contract stuff at Ooh, all? Oh, okay. So they're they're not Michael Tellinger's project, but Tony Lane's culture project um, is based on the Bitcoin blockchain, and it's about voluntary association and governances and um, because a big thing that the governments do is keep track of our data for us and then they charge us to give it back to us right but a lot of times they won't keep track of the data we want them to keep track of like maybe I'm married to somebody that they don't recognize the marriage you know not this government anymore well maybe you know maybe maybe I'm in a polygamous marriage who knows like I'm in a marriage and the government doesn't recognize my marriage but I can record that on the blockchain and then later when my marriage is recognized and I have this documentation, you know, like, look, this is something that really did happen a long time ago. Um, or um, you can use it to like record property, you know, say you live in Syria and America's coming to give you some more freedom. You can, um, you can document your land deeds and stuff and you can stash all that stuff onto the blockchain. You could probably, um, put up like maybe your kids fingerprints, put those in a stash, those somewhere, you know, so you have all of your data stored with your private keys so that later when you need it, you have it. You're not counting on, you know, like the city hall that got burnt down to prove that it's your kids, you know? Yeah. Smart contracts. Dark applications, but yeah. Smart contracts as I was reading sometime back, have been around a while, the concept mm -hmm. of those. And I, I guess there's still a lot of debate about, uh, yeah, different ways they work. Some people, I think, were kind of down on the Ethereum, the new smart contract. They're, you know, developing a new language for smart contracts. I can't right. remember what it's called. It's an Ethereum language, something. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, there was some piece about it and the way they were doing different servers and developing a different style of smart contracts. But I didn't think it sounded that great either. But, you know, the, I guess there's a lot of debate and concern about how, how those things work. But sometimes yeah. it's really about those people trying to maintain control of the system. So, right. But this isn't Ethereum. This is on the Bitcoin. This is on the Bitcoin blockchain. It doesn't have anything to do with cryptocurrency or collecting money for contracts. It's not the same. And, and you know, the smart contracts is a whole different thing. This is just stashing information. It's just taking information on the blockchain. Um, Tony, she's got some good videos on it. Are you, Tony Lane's been in Bitcoin for, it's just one of the like original Bitcoin people. And, um, you know, she's pretty hippy dippy, but she's definitely got some really forward ideas. I don't know. Anyway, it's, I think it's nice. I like the way the world's changing. It's time. Yeah. Okay. Well, I could, we could probably talk all day about stuff, but, um, yep. <laughs> gotta, 
get back to work on stuff here. So yeah, um, I think that's that's enough for today. Um, yeah, I'll just try to keep up on the uh, on stuff on the wiki. Watch the recent links, and yeah, I hope we get some documents to uh, write up more more stuff on the the hackathon software stuff and other things. Because um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I I usually have time to contribute some tidbits at least to that kind of stuff. Well, as I get a better as I get a better idea what I'm doing and what I'm looking for, you know, with looking at the different projects, I'll be able to do a lot more of that. And I really don't have a lot of work, you know, a lot of my wage slavery. That I'm, I don't even think of it as wage slavery. I love my job, but I've only got a couple shifts a week for the next few weeks, so I'll have a lot of time to work on this. Okay, I'm excited. All right. Okay, yep. All right. awesome. Thank yep. you. Good, good talk talking to y'all. Y'all. Mm -hmm. Bye. Right, bye.